Hey guys, it's Rob here and welcome back to another video for Nintendo news and rumors. Today we have some exciting news and rumors, but also some pretty bad news when it comes to emulation for the Nintendo 3DS and the Nintendo Switch, and by emulation of the Switch, I mean the legal kind. Because if you guys didn't know, it's actually legal to emulate Switch games as long as you're dumping them from the game you own and also not profiting from dumping those games or otherwise, something Yuzu didn't get the memo about apparently. I mean, it says it right here from copyright. Gov. It says under section 117 you or someone you authorize may make a copy of the original computer program if the new copy is being made for archival purposes only. You are the legal owner of the copy and any copy made for archival purposes is either destroyed or transferred with the original copy once the original copy is sold or given away or otherwise transferred. And then it gets to the illegal part which is you are not permitted under section 117 to make a backup copy of other material on computer hard drives such as copyright works that have been downloaded, which essentially is a ROM. We'll get into that whole thing because I think a lot of people are missing bits and parts of the information or not reading into it fully. I mean, more than likely, I'm probably going to miss a couple things here and there because it is pretty detailed in all the details in this whole situation. But first up, let's talk about the Donkey Kong movie. So apparently a Donkey Kong movie account was spotted, possibly anyways. Minions underscore fanboy has a thread that is pretty interesting. Check this out. So the first one says, as I already stated, the account has the same design as the official account for Mario as how it looked back when it was first discovered with the only true difference being the coming soon in the bio and not being present. It even has a similar placeholder name like Mario. He also goes on to talk about the followers of this movie are going to be the Super Mario Bros. movie, the Universal Pictures, and Illumination. Now he also mentions considering Mario Day is coming up, it's coming up on Sunday which is really really close, I'm hoping for that Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door announcement, the release date for it anyways. And Luigi's Mansion HD, I'm hoping for those two games. And here is the original screen for the Donkey Kong Twitter account. So this is pretty interesting and it does make a lot of sense because they already said that they want to make more movies when it comes to animation of Nintendo. Nintendo characters. I mean, Nintendo themselves have been exploring different areas a lot in the past couple years. I mean, they have a full-on theme park being built. With that being said, someone could have just created this and followed those three accounts just to stir up some drama or some attention. So you never really know. This could be nothing. We could not get a Donkey Kong reveal movie for Mario Day. So I guess we'll see on that. And moving on to the next part of the video, apparently LEGO is teasing some Mario Day announcements. So we'll probably get a new Mario Lego set. Now, assuming that something Donkey Kong will eventually happen, maybe we're going to get a version of the Mario Lego set, but instead of Mario, it's going to be Donkey Kong. I know there are some people who really enjoy those sets, so I wanted to put this in here for you guys and make sure you guys know that there might be something for you on Mario Day when it comes to Legos. Honestly, I do see a lot of cool Lego sets that I always wonder, you know what, it would be fun to actually get into Legos and build them and stuff. And not only Legos, but model building or maybe building my own Gundam and stuff like that. I always found that kind of stuff really fun to do, or the idea anyways. I used to do it when I was younger, but it kind of stopped. So who knows, maybe I'll pick up the Lego set, I don't know. And moving on to the bad Nintendo Switch news. So there is a lot going on when it comes to emulation for the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo 3DS. If you guys didn't hear, Nintendo went after the Yuzu creators for emulation, or more specifically the damages that they did to Tears of the Kingdom. So this all came about about, I think about a week and a half ago it was. It wasn't that long ago, surprisingly. You would think this would take a long time to get through, but apparently Nintendo has some pretty darn damning evidence when it comes to Yuzu and their use of the emulation and gaining money from that emulation, and there's a whole bunch here. So like I said in the beginning of the video, it is legal to emulate your Nintendo Switch games, as long as you're dumping your own versions of those cartridges. Now what's not legal is profiting from those cartridges. And not only emulation on that, but other things that also have to do with Nintendo's own games, like Tears of the Kingdom. That was one of the big things that people were talking about at first, is that Tears of the Kingdom lost a lot of copies to, well, piracy. Let's call it for what it is. If you're downloading the game before the release date, that's piracy. Piracy is illegal. It wasn't their version of the cartridge. This is what Polygon.com had to say. The 41-page lawsuit was 
was filed against Tropic Haze, the company that makes Yuzu. Nintendo also specifically referenced a person as Bonet, who leads development on Yuzu. Yuzu is a free emulator that was released in 2018, months after the Nintendo Switch originally launched. Some folks who made Citra, a Nintendo 3DS emulator, made this one. Now it says in the lawsuit that Nintendo said that there is no legal way to use Yuzu, which isn't really true. You can dump your games, which again is legal according to the government, the ones who actually make the laws, and you can emulate them with Yuzu, so that's just completely not true. From my understanding anyways. Now they also state that in the argument that Nintendo put towards Yuzu, it says that Yuzu executes codes that defeat Nintendo security measures, including description using an illegally obtained copy of prod keys. In other words, without Yuzu's decryption of Nintendo's encryption, unauthorized copies of games could not be played on PC or Android devices. Okay, so I'm reading this the first time, and if that's the case, then I guess I could see why Nintendo would say that there is no legal way to use Yuzu if that's how games are running. Unless there is a way to not do that and still get the games running. Again, I'm no expert. But based on that, if every single time you use Yuzu, you're using illegally obtained information, um, that's, that's piracy and that's illegal. <laughs> Now they also go on to talk about Tears of the Kingdom, and this is what they say. Nintendo also pointed out the release of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom leaked almost two weeks earlier than the game on May 12th, its release date. And they say that it was downloaded more than one million times, which is a lot, and probably more after that. I mean, it's probably way past that by now. Now Nintendo also brought up that Yuzu doesn't give out pirated games, Nintendo repeatedly said that most ROM sites point towards Yuzu to play whatever games they've downloaded. And this next part is where Yuzu really screwed up here. They completely screwed game preservation, legal emulation, and everything. And honestly, the only other way to emulate your 3DS games as well. But let's be honest, a lot of people were using Citrus to illegally emulate 3DS games. I think we gotta be honest here. So this is what Polygon's article says. Nintendo said it's expanded its significant resources to stop the illegal copying, marketing, sale, and distribution of Nintendo Switch games. It says that Yuzu earns the team 30,000 per month of its Patreon from more than 7,000 Patreons. Nintendo said the company has earned at least 50,000 in paid downloads. And keep in mind, this is all gonna come back to bite them in the butt later on when more news comes out, or when we get to that part of the news anyways. They also say that Nintendo said that Yuzu's Patreon doubled its paid members in the period between May 1st and May 12th when Tears of the Kingdom was released. So that's a little sketchy already. I mean, the fact that they doubled it so that they can get more money because they know more people would would be willing to pay that for whatever's behind that Patreon wall to make more money off of Nintendo's stuff. I mean, that's exactly what they did. They perfectly planned that to make more money between that release date. Again, two weeks before it was released. So yeah, that that's illegal right there. You can't say, oh no, that's good. That's perfectly fine. That's kind of illegal. And now not too long after all of this, they just got slammed with 2.4 million dollars. That is a lot of money. This is what The Verge had to say. According to the joint filing, Tropic Hayes has not only agreed to pay 2.4 million dollars to Nintendo, but also says Yuzu is primarily designed to circumvent and play Nintendo Switch games. The company agrees to be permanently enjoined from working on Yuzu, hosting Yuzu, distributing Yuzu's codes or features, hosting websites and social media that promote Yuzu, or do anything else that circumvents Nintendo's copyright protection. Translation, Yuzu is getting wiped off the map, and unfortunately, the side effect of this is that the emulator Citra is also getting wiped off the map as well, or it already has been. Now, the reason behind this is because the people behind Yuzu also are behind Citra as well, so that was kind of the uh, collateral damage of Yuzu's destruction. Now, another thing that Yuzu, I think, did wrong was just have builds of games before they released. If they didn't have those builds before they released and it was after the release, that would make a lot more sense. I mean, Tears of the Kingdom, apparently Xenoblades as well, they locked that behind a paywall and obviously Nintendo's gonna go after them for that. I don't really understand why there are a lot of people who do these things knowing full well that there's a high chance that Nintendo is gonna go after them. It makes me wonder if they would've just did everything for free and tried to avoid anything that would make Nintendo turn their heads their way, would this have not happened? Or would have Nintendo went after them and they would have failed and the Nintendo Switch emulation scene would have been fine as well as a 3DS 
emulation scene. Now, speaking a little bit on the 3DS, this really does suck because we don't have access to the 3DS. 3DSs do cost a lot more. I looked online, they cost almost as much as a Nintendo Switch. Some cases, if you wanna get specific versions, like special editions or some other edition that you want, or maybe it's a version of the Nintendo 3DS that you wanna get, those cost more than a Nintendo Switch in some cases. Not only that, but eventually they will go away and they'll be harder to find, harder to replace. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but more than likely it will with all of these older consoles. And Nintendo ain't exactly bringing out a lot of 3DS games when it comes to remasters for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, we're getting Luigi's Mansion HD 2, and we're also getting the one game from Capcom, Dragon Quest Stories. I mean, Monster Hunter Stories, but I mean, there are a lot of other 3DS games. I mean, just off of the top of my head, Kid Icarus Uprising. I mean, I can look on how much that costs right now. How much does it cost, I wonder? It costs between $40 and $50, almost a brand new Nintendo Switch game. And don't even get me started on the Pokemon games. So yeah, this was a big blow to emulation when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, the legal kind anyways. Although one could say it's illegal to download the ROMs, so you still have to buy the ROMs themselves anyways. And I think that's where a lot of people are kind of, I don't wanna say mixing up each other's sides or saying, how, do, how should I explain this? There are some people who are kind of using piracy as a defense against Nintendo's actions here. If that makes any sense, they're kind of saying, well, you know what, if Nintendo's gonna do this, we're just gonna pirate all those games and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And that's illegal. I mean, there's no two ways about it. Now, in my mind, if Nintendo doesn't provide a way to play these games and they'll eventually go away and no one will be able to play them eventually, hey, look, gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not saying it's legal. I'm not saying to do it but there are ways. I mean, I wouldn't want these games to be lost to time for Nintendo to just not do anything with them and no one will be able to play them ever again. That would suck. I mean, let's be honest here. I think the good thing about this situation, or not good thing, but the good thing right now is that you can still use Citra. You just gotta find it, which I don't know how to find it. I'm sure people have made backups of it. I mean, anything on the internet, especially now. I mean, right when that news hit, people probably made backups like that. So I think you can eventually find those emulations and more will pop up as well and probably learn from what Yuzu did. But as far as game preservation goes, if Nintendo doesn't give us a way to play them, emulation is still gonna flourish. I mean, that's the thing. You gotta give players a way to play these games or else they're gonna choose other options. That's why I'm such a big advocate for The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess ports because I know eventually we're gonna get to this same situation we have with the 3DS and other games with those games. I mean right now Wind Waker isn't too bad when it comes to buying the game but again when it's on the Nintendo Switch it's portable. I mean, you can't get any better than that. And again, it helps that game preservation because if that version of the game is there, then it just lasts longer. It's my hope that Nintendo is gonna bring more 3DS games, especially the most wanted ones and bigger ones to the Nintendo Switch, kind of like Luigi's Mansion HD and Capcom with Monster Hunter Story. So at least some of these games can survive a little bit longer, you know? Overall, those are kind of just my thoughts and the information. And, and I know like a lot of people are gonna have different kind of opinions on this. Some people are gonna disagree with me. Some people are gonna throw angry comments in the comment section. Some people are just gonna kinda be in the middle. Some people won't care. It's all over the place right now, but uh, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.